Today we are learning how to make the stock and net with garter border in our How to Knit for Complete Beginners series, Lesson 3. In Lesson 1, you learned how to make the garter stitch, your basic knit stitch. In Lesson 2, you learned how to make this curly stock and net with pearls and the combination of knits on the right side. But this week we are going to combine the two and do this one right here where you've got stock and knit in the middle and then garter border around on the outside. We're going to make washcloths, whether you want to make it in a larger bulkier stitch like this with larger needles, or if you want to make it in cotton, you can do that as well with a smaller needle. So we're going to do that today. We're also going to learn how to work with stitch markers, placing them and working around them to actually help you in a pattern. We're also going to give you a taste of how to walk through and read a pattern. Don't worry, there aren't crazy abbreviations or anything complicated. I'm going to walk it through with you and you will continue to build our skills in this series. So again, I'm Kristen Mangus with Good Knit Kisses and welcome to How to Knit for Complete Beginners Lesson 3. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. Don't forget, we have timestamps along the bottom or in the description. You can click on them and jump to the skill that you'd like to build today, as well as captions. So we have closed captions on our videos, as well as right and left-handed videos. So be sure and turn those captions on. You can hit that button to speed up or slow down this video. But importantly, go click in the link below to more tutorials if you want to go slow and go back to lesson one or two for those basic skills, or if you want to jump ahead to the next lesson and see what we've got. All the links are down below. So we're taking our skills of working this uh, knit stitch in the middle as a stockinette by purling on the back and then we're also putting our skills together of knitting on the border stitches. But how do we do that? Well, one way is to use stitch markers, kind of like this sample here, where I've got a stitch marker hanging out on my needles and I can work certain number of stitches and then know that when I get to my stitch marker, I need to change what I'm doing. And then when I get to the next one, I change what I'm doing again. So we're gonna be working with uh, stitch markers in this video. You're gonna need them big enough, uh, even if you need to use like say a rubber band or something like that that's small, like a, a hair band if you don't have um, any of the stitch markers, you just need it to be able to fit over your needle. So whether you choose to use the larger, chunkier needles or the smaller needles, you can do uh, either one in this video. I am gonna go over the supplies that you need. I do want to mention, if you are using the fuzzier yarn we used in the last two videos, um, it's not really appropriate for a nice smooth washcloth. So I'm not gonna be using that in this video, but I wanted you to see what it works up to look like. And then I am recommending Bernat Softy Chunky for our option one, which is using the larger needles. Now it recommends in this ball band where we talked about how to read the ball band or yarn label. Uh, it is a super bulky weight yarn. And then when you look at the needles here, it doesn't say the 15 like we've used in uh, the other one. This one actually goes to a US 11, which is an eight millimeter. So I've tested it on a couple of different needles to see. Uh, this one here, if I work it with the 11s, I get um, the number of stitches that they say. It works up nice, it's nice and dense. It'll produce a six inch square. If I jump to up to a needle size of 13, which is a nine millimeter, it makes something that looks like this, which is really nice too. And that's about a six and a half inch square. And then if I use the same needles that I told you to buy in the beginning, uh, it makes a really nice uh, loose uh, stitch and this is a nice uh, face cloth. Okay, so if you want it more dense, you can go with the smaller needles, but uh, if you don't wanna buy any new needles and you're using the ones we've used before, just go ahead and work the pattern in this. And you can save that yarn and needles to work um, a few more patterns that we're gonna do later on in this series. So you don't have to make a whole bunch unless you want to, but I want you to know you can save up on that. I am going to show you how to work circulars and see how you can work back and forth in a flat panel on these circular needles. So uh, I'm going to show you those techniques today. You are going to need two stitch markers that slide over your needles and you'll, you'll need one uh, that's a uh, locking stitch marker to show you the right side, the good side of um, your uh, knitting if you want that. 
Okay, so option two is going to be a cotton yarn. This may look a little bit different than what you're used to. It's solid and it's smooth and shiny, and that's because it's a mercerized cotton. You don't have to know <laughs> all about that, but it's, it's handled a little bit different and treated so it's actually denser, and it's not as absorbent as a regular cotton, but it's got vibrant colors. But what I like about this is it's easier to use for a beginner. So like this has actually kind of a chain construction, and I think it's easier and it shows the stitches really well. It's just, it's just easy to work with, and I love the color. So this one is Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton, and it recommends a US 6 needle, uh, which is four millimeter. However, I used a seven and I got the same gauge that it says on here. So this is a US seven needle that's four and a half millimeter. If you are a really tight knitter, you can use the seven or even the eight that I've recommended before. Just uh, test it out on those needles. Just work with what you have. Uh, and you can get a non mercerized cotton as well. It, that doesn't matter, but a nice number four weight cotton and a smaller needle is appropriate. And we'll go over the pattern right now. So be sure and click down below in the blog to get that. So here is our pattern for the needle knit washcloth. We're doing the basic bordered washcloth. I'm showing the picture of both option one and option two right here. And in all of my patterns, this is the same similar format. So uh, you'll kind of get used to this format. We tried to make it as simple as possible in this one so that you're not uh, having to deal with a whole lot of abbreviations, but get you used to a few things, kind of dipping your toe in the water for patterns. Now this one does include the two different gauges that we talked about, the two different sizes of yarns and needles. I'm not gonna read over this whole thing, but the sections of this area are, we're talking about the materials up here, which I just covered in option one and two. So note one is the bulkier and two is the smaller. And then we go over those needles here. And then also the notions or extras, the tapestry needle and the stitch marker. And then jumping over to the next page. And if you're on the blog, just, just keep scrolling. Uh, or you can also get this um, PDF if you'd like. The abbreviations that we're using are very few. The word repeat is just REP, and then uh, stitches is either ST or STS, or we just spell out stitches all together. And then RS and WS are the only ones that I really um, note on here, and you'll see those when we get to the rows, the row numbers, so you can tell which is on the right or wrong side and get used to that. This is an uh, easy skill level. It's going to be about seven inches or 17 and a half centimeters squared. And then notes, when you start reading patterns, it's always good to go ahead and read the notes very carefully because it answers some questions. And if you ever get stuck in a pattern in the instruction section, go back to the notes and make sure you didn't misread something or completely miss a note. I've actually notice that when I'm reading patterns. Um, if I go too quickly, I may have missed an, some information up in the notes section. And then uh, tutorial videos, usually in my uh, patterns, this is where you'll go to find the link for the video, which is the one you're watching right now. The last page in this one is actually where it includes the instructions for both of the patterns. We're gonna go over the super bulky washcloth instructions first, and it's similar for the medium one. I will um, show you knitting on both of them just so you can see the difference and how I approach those, but they're basically the same. They just have different cast-ons, and then there's just a couple of little changes. So you're going to cast on your number of stitches, and then row one says in parentheses W, US. That means that when we work row one, it's on that on that uh, wrong side row. And then when we get to row two, we're on the right side row and we knit both of those rows. And then we repeat rows one and two, two times. That means that we have already done that repeat and then we do it two more times. So you're technically making three garter stitch ridges, which is actually six rows altogether. And um, when you're here, this is where you can place your locking stitch marker to mark the right side. You just put it on the front and we'll show you that on video. And you can see on my sample here, I've placed it. Every time you're on the side with the stitch marker, you'll know that's a right side. And when you're on the one that doesn't have one, you'll know you're on the wrong side. The wrong side is where you're gonna be purling. So let's jump back over here and row three is on the wrong side. This is where you're going to be putting your markers on your knitting. Okay, so you're going to be working a number of stitches, 
then you're going to put the marker on there and then purl until you have a number of stitches left and put your marker on and then knit the remaining stitches. And then down here, this is how typically patterns are set up. Once you've given the main instructions of placing the marker, now we have um, some of the things that get abbreviated later on. You've got row four, we're going to knit across, okay, that's on the right side. You don't have to do any purling. And then row five is the wrong side again. So when you don't see that stitch marker, you're going to knit to the marker, slip the marker, purl to the next marker and knit to the end. So I'm going to show you what that means, but I just want you to get a concept of what's coming ahead. And then you're going to repeat those rows until you get to a certain length. And we'll go over that too. You will need a measuring tape. I forgot to mention that. And then um, we'll do the ending together. And then you bind off or cast off all the stitches and we'll do that together. So if you're working on a medium weight washcloth, you're going to cast on 32 stitches. You'll do 16 for the super bulky. So go ahead and grab your yarn and supplies and we will begin that right now. All right, we're gonna cast on. Again, you can use straight needles. I'm showing circular that you can work this flat panel washcloth on a circular needle. And I'm gonna demonstrate on the larger needles. You need to cast on 16 stitches for the larger or 32 stitches for the smaller. So go ahead and do that. And just a reminder for the long tail cast on, start with a little bit of a tail and do about three times the width that you want for your uh, washcloth. So this is about seven inches. I'm gonna pull out one, two, three, and then I can put my slip knot on, wrap it around my finger, take the back loop over the front loop, take the back loop up and over the front again. Okay, and then we have our tail that goes towards us and the ball in the back. If you always remember ball in the back, you'll have this set up right. So go ahead and place that on our needle, pull it, Make sure it still slides. It's not going to fall off, but it's not too tight. Okay, so we're going to grab our yarn, split that, pull it back for our slingshot. We're going to go up through the thumb, around and down at the finger, pull it through down at the thumb, and let it go. Leave that little bit of a spacing. You could put your finger right here after you make that stitch and give it that little space so it'll catch on the front of your fingertip. Go up at the thumb, down at the finger, down at the thumb, let it go and pull it. All right, continue casting on until you have 16 stitches for slower videos. The link is down below. All right, pause your video and I'll see you in a moment. You've casted on your number of stitches and we are now on the wrong side. You notice it because you can see the pearl bumps here. You're going to go ahead and knit across all of your stitches for row one. Go ahead and do that. Again, the knit stitch, you put your needle in, yarn around and over, and pull it on through. And then take off the old. So we put our needle in. Go around the needle in the back, pull our, ne our needle through, pull that loop through, and then let it hop off, okay? So continue knitting all the way down, and I'm going to continue on camera. You can pause as needed, and I'm going to show you what I do on my circular needles here. So you can see that my, my cord is really long. Yours can be long or short, it doesn't matter. If your cord is a little bit more coily than you'd like and it's kind of in the way or it's not soft enough, you can dip it in some hot water uh, <clears throat> and then uh, of course dry it off, but it will soften this uh, cord here, okay? That's particularly the case if you're borrowing some old needles from someone, uh, they may be very stiff. Okay, so, oh, I just did that without thinking about it. Okay, so I just, um, I've knit all the way over to this, to this side here, and then I just turn it, and then my cord is right here. So the needle hasn't gone anywhere. You can't, you can't drop a needle. Uh, if you do, it just falls down there like that. So um, you do want to finish a row when you're working with uh, circular needles. You want to finish that out. Same thing with a straight needle. Uh, and then when you're done, if you do need to set it aside to go to the restroom or whatever, you can just slide your work all the way down onto this cord here. 
and put it in your bag and or lay it down on the couch or whatever as long as you don't have pets and it will be perfectly fine you won't drop any stitches and when you're ready to start again see where your yarn is and then you're just going to slide this needle here put it right back up on here and you're ready to begin your next row so we are on the right side row now you can see the smooth edge of the right side and this is an opportunity to put in a stitch marker and hang it on one of these stitches to show you what the right side is. So I have this stitch marker here and I'm just going to go up through one of these purl bumps from the uh, stitch that was just in the row below. And just gonna go through that and put my stitch marker right there, okay? Uh, or you can mark the, the front side of this smooth. But if you pay attention to your uh, your bind on, or your cast on here, you can see that this is a smooth side and you know that that is the the right side. So you may or may not need this, but it's a nice visual when you're a beginner. Okay, so you're gonna knit across row two, same thing, all right? And then when you're finished with row two, you can repeat what you just did two more times, okay? And that is going to be for the larger uh, size. And let me show you the pattern For the smaller one, uh, this the smaller needles. Uh, that one is going to be um, repeated three times more. Okay, so here is my row, and now I have that pearl ridge from the back, and now what I just knit has a pearl ridge back here. You're going to end up with three ridges on the front of your work, like this. So you have your cast on edge and your uh, you just made this ridge, you're going to make two more of these ridges and then um, we'll be ready to start the next section starting right here when we come back. So if you're working the smaller needles, you're going to work four of these ridges. So you're repeating that section three more times instead of two more times. Okay. All right. So go ahead and work on your size and when we come back, we'll work on row three. We'll see you soon. All right, we're back and you have already asked the question in your brain, I know, Kristen, why are we on row three when clearly I'm at a different row number? Like on this one, I'd be row seven and this one I would be row nine. So why is that? Well, that's because in the pattern, it's just showing you that uh, by saying row three, it's just showing a different type of thing is happening then, but it still corresponds to it's an odd number and therefore we're working on the wrong side. So if you're on the right side right now, you're going to flip over because you would have just finished that right side row. And row three is where we're going to be adding in our stitch markers. So on either size, the small or the large, um, you can um, go ahead and be on this side here, which is the wrong side. And um, you're going to work them both the same way. You're gonna work a number of stitches and then we're gonna put a marker on and then uh, do some purls. So let's go ahead and work the first four stitches on our larger needles. One, two, three, four. And now we're going to place the marker. If you're working on the uh, smaller size, I'll show you that in a moment. So we're going to pick up a marker. Uh, I'm actually just gonna use this little hair rubber band. Look at that, the little, this little plastic tie. We're just going to slip it on the uh, needle that we just used, okay? And then we're going to put our yarn in the front and then we're going to purl. So go ahead and put your needle in, yarn over, and then push that purl stitch all the way through and slide it off, okay? So now you're just going to continue purling until there are four stitches remaining on the row and we're gonna place a marker here. So go ahead and do that, and I'm going to go over uh, this um, other size, option two, with people who want that. So for option two, you're going to work the first five stitches. So go ahead and uh, knit those first five. One, two, three, four, and five, okay? and then pick up your marker 
and I'm going to put this one on here and coincidentally this marker will actually fit uh, this size seven I, well any smaller needle but it also will fit the uh, larger one as well so it just slips right on and this is a removable one so make sure that you've got them connected if you use this particular stitch marker make sure they're connected it's a um, a lockable one is what I mean so slide that on our needle and then now we're going to move our yarn forward and purl to till uh, you have five stitches remaining okay so go ahead and purl across and when you have five stitches remaining on this size or four stitches remaining on this size uh, come back to our video and I'm going to show you putting on those other needles and what to do next all right we'll see you in a moment all right we are ready for our next stitch marker your yarn is still in front you want to go ahead and put your yarn to the back so that you don't forget because we're going to knit till the end of this row so go ahead and pick up your next stitch marker and slip it on your needle and then knit till the end of the row now if you went too far uh, you knit too many or purl too many stitches you can always undo them using the technique I showed you in our last video let me go ahead and show you that again on this one okay so if you uh, have gone too far let's go ahead and knit one more purl if you've gone too far I say I've got four left on this one I need five uh, I'm just going to pull back on my yarn here go ahead and stick my needle into the stitch that was just made and then we can just slide it off of that needle okay now go ahead and put your yarn to the back before putting your stitch marker on it's, it's easier to do it now and then we're going to go ahead and put this next one on make sure that this locking one is connected all right slide that stitch marker on and go ahead and knit until the end okay pause your video as you need now we're ready to work on our next row which is a right side row so turn over our needles and uh, you can see let's look at this larger one you can see when I pull this back you can see how uh, these little pearl bumps stick out here and then all of a sudden it goes down it's um, it's a lower area see how it has dimension here and then it just kind of goes down so uh, all you're going to do is knit across this entire row just as you would normally so every time you are on a right side row you will only knit you will never do anything else but let's go ahead and approach where we have the stitch markers and what happens when you hit one of those because you do have to move them so go ahead and start knitting the first few stitches okay when you get to your first stitch marker whichever size you're working on you're going to pick it up with this needle here just slip it onto the tip there and slide it over and then continue working as usual okay it's that simple that's all you need to do okay so go ahead and complete this row this is uh, row four and we're knitting across okay same one here let's show slipping that stitch marker one two three four and five and then we're gonna pick up the stitch marker you can use your fingers if you want but I just use the tip of my needle and then slide it right on over and continue working okay we'll uh, pause our videos and we'll see you in a moment for the remaining of the pattern so you've knit a row four we're on row five and this is where more of the mistakes can happen so I just wanted to give you a heads up on this and how to fix that uh, what you're going to do is for either size you're only uh, knitting until you get to the marker okay so knit to the first marker pause your video if you need to and then you slip the marker and then you have to put the yarn in front to purl so we're just going to go in front here and then purl okay and then you're purling until you get to the next marker so let's just go ahead and do this right here together and I'm not going to show you on the smaller needles because I don't think you need that demonstration but I am going to show you just in case you forget how you can fix it just in case you forget to uh, put your yarn to the back to make that knit stitch alright so you slip your marker for the next one okay and then we need to go to the knit stitch but what happens if you um, 
go in here and you go, okay, now I'm going to knit. Let's go ahead and knit. Let's do that. And then you go on the other side and you complete that. Let me just show you the example. I come over here and I start to work. And then I notice when I start knitting, you might notice that, oh, my stitch count is off. I'm like, why do I have an extra stitch here? Like, see, I just did four and go, wait a minute, my marker's here and then I have this weird stitch here. Well, it also doesn't look and behave like a regular stitch. It's just this really extra loose piece. That's because you made an increase, a yarn over increase, and you need to take that out. So, um, yes, it could be dropped, but the problem is now you have extra yarn here. And um, if you continued knitting, you would have a hole in your work, and then you would be increasing and making it wider. So you'll need to go back, just undo those stitches. And we went over uh, doing undoing those stitches in lesson one. Just go back. And now we're going to uh, undo these stitches here. Okay, and now we're coming to that yarn over and you can see that we just need to put our yarn to the back and then knit our stitches. Okay, and that's how you solve that problem. All right. So uh, here's the instructions for uh, the remainder of the pattern of the main field part, not this end part, but to get us to here to make it even. So I'm gonna show you on another sample here and uh, we'll, we'll get to this point. So you can keep knitting, uh, but uh, keep watching this, this part. So here's my longer samples that I've switched out to show you. So you're going to continue knitting rows four and five until you reached the desired length. Okay, so uh, how I know how to do that is you're going to take your measuring tape and you're going to, um, uh, if you've got the cable needles, it's nice because you can just slide your work to the cable and it's easier to measure. Um, otherwise, you could measure right up into the bottom of the um, needle if you need to. Uh, but you're going to take your measuring tape, and I'm sorry if on the left-handed video it's flipped, the numbers are flipped, but uh, you just put your zero right up to the bottom of where the cast-on edge is, and then just pull it right up to the top, and I can see that I'm at five and a half inches here, which is the number actually for both of these sizes, and I did update the sizes in the pattern from what you saw in the video. The smaller size one is going to be six and a half for the smaller needle and uh, yarn and then the larger one is actually going to be uh, seven inches this is a sample right here of the washcloth so um, the way that you can make adjustments is say you used a different needle or maybe you're getting a different um, width across is uh, this little trick here so let's look at this now okay so you're going to take your um, measuring tape measure across and I have seven inches across that's what my knitting is even if you've got uh, this amount of knitting on here and it's not quite done maybe you go to what you think is maybe halfway or something um, you can come across here measure at seven all right so we know that's our goal and then I'm gonna measure my this is my um, actually this is my cast on here and that's my bind off so uh, here's my nice clean edge and I want to measure uh, from the uh, edge of that cast on right down here to the very ending of where my uh, border stops. Okay, so I can see it's about one and a quarter an inch. Okay, so I'm gonna mark off that one and a quarter inch and I'm gonna pretend that this is the width of this border and it's gonna be up top here. Okay, so I'm gonna measure with an invisible border <laughs> length plus this border here plus the length here. Okay, so I'm gonna put this number down here, kind of hold on to it, and now from the zero all the way up to this line, this line right here is how I got my five. So I just kind of pulled it until I found where the seven is, okay, and I know my goal is seven, and so I look here and I go, oh, okay, so seven is what it is, all right, so what is seven minus this little width right here, okay, that's actually five and a half, okay, so going up to here, see how it hits right at five and a half? That's how we, we get that. So you can notice if you get up to this point and you go, maybe your knitting looks like this. It's only to that point. You know you have, you've got to go to seven. We know we're at one and a quarter here, so I'm going to mark that. I go up to here and measure, and I stop. And I'm like, oh, I'm only at five inches here. 
Okay, I need to get it to seven. So I know that I have this much more to go. Okay, what is this much more to go? So I can kind of take this amount here. I know this is like non-scientific, but I could actually go here. And before we talk about gauge in here and really confuse you, you can come over here and just lay your tape measure on here and go, oh, I need about one, two, three, four, four-ish more rows to work until I get to that point and I wanna measure again. So that's just a really easy way to kind of start um, learning how to kind of get your knitting to the right length, okay? I hope that's not too overwhelming. I hope that makes sense. Just put that information in your back pocket and bookmark this video because I promise you, you're going to want to remember that later on. And uh, it's a skill that is really good to know when you're knitting along and you want to get something to um, a square size or to the right length. All right, so continue on until you get to that length and uh, we'll meet you back at this point here. See you soon. Okay, so you are on your right side and you need to go ahead and work your um, uh, knit stitches for the remainder. So we're just going to knit everything. Go ahead and knit up to your stitch marker. And at this point, it doesn't say it in the pattern, but this is where you can take off your stitch marker. You do not need it anymore. In fact, you don't even need the one marking the right side anymore. Okay, that is just a visual indicator to you. So continue working that, and your that's the right side stitch, and so our right side row that's a row six, and then the row seven is the wrong side row, and you're going to repeat that um, two more times if you're doing the larger uh, size or larger uh, bulkier yarn, and you're going to repeat that three more times if you're working on uh, this one over here on option two. So uh, go ahead and do that, and pause your video. I'll meet you back up. You should be on a right side row, and we'll do the bind off together. See you in a moment. Okay, so we do have a slower video on binding off down at the link below for lesson number one. I've gone ahead and bound off uh, this one over here and let's work on this one. Just a reminder, you're just going to be knitting the first two stitches to bind off and then you slip the first stitch that you made over the second one. Just pass it right up over, okay? And then we knit the next stitch and then pass that slip stitch over. It's not really a slip stitch, but you're passing this first stitch over the second stitch, okay? And you just continue going, and when you have your last stitch remaining, you just pull it on through, and then you'll weave in your tails. So you have your beginning tail and your ending tail, and you'll have your finished product. So I'll show you what this looks like when I'm done. There it is with woven in tails. They make great washcloths. All right, so how was that learning how to make the washcloth with the borders? I hope you found that helpful and really enjoyed looking at patterns in a new way. If you've tried to look at them before, remember that future patterns are going to have a little bit more abbreviation, but this is just a building block, a step. So as you'll join me for all the next lessons, you're going to begin to learn more and more, and we're going to make things a little bit more abbreviated, but you will start building those skills. So please continue to check in with our lessons. Next week, we're going to be learning about the rib stitch and different ribbing, and we'll have a small project for you to work as well with that. And I cannot wait to see your projects on Instagram, so be sure and tag me at Kisses so I can see those. Well, we'll see you next time for lesson four, how to knit for complete beginners, the rib stitch. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.